Hi, welcome back to my channel. I have a problem. I have an unboxing and I bought my books. Yep, um, I have a book outlet box. Yeah, it's huge. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, I am going to unbox this one. I'm assuming that this is the box that I purchased. Um, I went on there and I wanted to buy books that were on the Bally's, um, Bally's Winners Reward. They're female writers. So I went, I put, p printed up the list. It had 130 books in there. And I picked out some that Book Outlet had that I wanted to read. So let's see what's in this box. So yeah, I think I got 10 books in this box so I think that this is the box otherwise I do have two orders so I'm hoping that this is the Bailey's box so here we go let's see if I open it up lots of paper yes, yes. okay this is the Bailey's box so all these all these books in this box are woman writers and they all won um, some kind of award they either won the they're all on the short list um they some of them didn't win the w prize but they did win they did get up on the short list so i took the short list there was 130 books on the short list all the way back to 19 something or other and um yeah i will post it on um when i edit the video so here we go let's see what's in this box so yeah so the first book i see in here is um on beauty but zadie smith on beauty and this is the author is by the author of nw so yeah zadie smith on beauty and i think the book is called on beauty and the author's name is zadie smith <laughs> but it's a really strange um title of the book because i don't know but when i edit this i'll let you know let me see what this book is about Okay, just outside the Bo just outside of Boston, in the small college town of Wellington, lives a lives a family that is anything but typical, liberated by education, complicated by race, and hobbled by self de delusion. They are about to stray onto the back battleground that divides personal belief from political conviction. On beauty is Zadie Smith's brilliant, hilarious send-up of the culture wars that define our age. So, yeah, she was shortlisted for the year's Man Booker Prize. On Beauty is a rockingly satire of the sacred pieties laid bare when a university confronts thorny issues of race, class, and privilege. So, yeah, a trend tremendously good read. So, yeah, so that's that one. Okay, the next book in here is The Paying Guest by Sarah Waters. It looks like this. Um, and this one, it says, A Fever Dream of a Novel um, That Will Leave You All Wrung Out. So, let me see what it says on the back. It says, It is 1922 and London is tense. Ex-servicemen are dil disillusioned, the out-of-work and the hungry are demanding change, and in the south of the city it is a quiet home on gentered Champion Hill. Life is about to be transformed. Widowed Mrs. Rye, or Ray, it could, it's W-R-A-Y, and her unmarried daughter Frances find themselves obliged to take a in tenants the arrival of Lillian and Leonard Barber a modern young couple of the emerging middle class brings unsettling things with the lively music colorful clothing open doors and fun as Lillian and Francis are drawn into an unexpected friendship loyalties begin to shift secrets are in or confessed Dangerous desires admitted the most originally of lives, it seems, can explode into passion and drama. And in the house on Chapleton, Champion Hill, no one can foresee just how far the disturbances will reach. So, yeah. So that's that one. 
Okay, the next one in here is The Idea of Perfection by Katie Grenville. And this one is not that much on the back. So it says, Douglas stood with the curtain in his hand watching her across the road as she looked at Parnassus. Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, road exposed under the sky, a salt of the earth type. Salt of the earth, that was one of Marjorie's expressions. What she meant by that was badly dressed. So I read exactly what it says on there. So I have no idea what this book is about. But it did win. It did get on the short list. So that's that one. Okay, the next one in here is The God in Every Stone by Camellia Champsy. And this one is about in the summer of 1914 a young english woman vivian rose spencer joins an archaeological dig in turkey fulfilling a long-held dream she falls in love with turkish architect uh Tash tashkin bay and joins him in his quest to find an ancient silver circuit but the outbreak of war on Europe brings her I idyllic summer to a sudden end and her new friends become her nation's enemies. Thousands of miles away, 20-year-old Pathan is learning about brotherhood and loyalty in the British Indian Army. When he loses an eye in battle and is sent to England to recuperate, his allegiances falter. Returning home at last, um, he shares a train carriage with Vivian Rose, whose continued search for the circuit has led her to Peshaw in the heart of a British rage. Um, many years later, the two cross paths again, and their loyalties will be tested once more amidst massacres cover-ups and the disappearance of young man they both love so yeah so that's that one okay the next one in here is outline by rachel cusk and this one um this one only has praise on the back so i'll read one of the praises um a subtle and utterly engrossing exploration of the ways we make ourselves known to one another in stories and and antidotes though seductions and disputes and yet remain opaque how we sketch ourselves as outliners and find these outlined interrogate interrogated the cons conversations in outline echo one another deftly their acute insights gracefully pulling apart the seams of its carefully composed ca characters to show Glimpses of much messier cells within a series of searing psychic x-rays bleached by coastal light. I hope the book's not all like that. That's a lot. A lot to read. Anyway, so that's this one. Okay, the next one is Small Island by Andrea Levy. And this actually has the winner prize on the front. Um, and I think that this might be, also, oh, it's a PBS series. So I think that's what it says on here. Um, and Small, uh, Small Island is an international bestseller. It won the Orange Prize for Fiction, the Orange Prize for Fiction, Best of the Best, the White Bread Novel Award, the White Bread Book of the Year Award, the Common... Wealth Writers Prize. It has now been adapted for the screen as a production of the BBC and masterpiece WGBH Boston. So yeah, so it's a TV show. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's that one. And the next one is uh, May We Be Forgiven by A.M. Holmes. And this one uh, says on the back, Holmes' most complicated, hilarious, acerbic, and accomplished novel to date. 
In this vivid, transfixing novel, A.H. Holmes presents a darkly comic look at a 21st century domestic life and the possibility of personal transformation. Harold Silver has spent a lifetime watching his more successful younger brother, George, acquire a convertible, com, covetable wife, two kids, and a, one, a beautiful home in the suburbs of New York City. When George's murderous temper results in a shocking act of violence, both men are hurled into eternity, uh, and into entirely new lives. May we be forgiven digs deeply into the near biblical intensity of fraternal relationships, our need to make sense of things, and our craving for connection. It is an unnerving tale of unexpected intimacies, intimacies and of how one deeply fractured family might begin to put itself back together. So that seems really interesting. <laughs> okay, so the next one in here is the Portable uh, Veblen uh, by Elizabeth Mackenzie, a novel of such festive original uh, originality that is that it would be a shame to miss. So that was quoted by New York Times, and it says the National Book Award long list. Um, it says a sweet, sharply written romantic comedy about a pitfalls of approaching marriage. So floating into her thirties, Veblen is an amateur translator and freelance self. Her fiance, Paul, is a brilliant neurologist whose research has led to high stakes military contract. As he gets swept up by the promise of fame and fortune, Veblen heroic horrically keeps the peace between all the damaged parties involved in their upcoming wedding until she finds herself falling for someone and something else. Featuring hippie parents, Big Farmer, a late 19th century economist, and something called the pneumonic Turbo Skull Punch, the portable Veblen asks, where do our families end and we begin? How do we stay true to our ideals and what is that squirrel really thinking? So, yeah, seems interesting. So that one. Okay, the next one is The Bees by Leyline Leyline Paul. Um, sorry if I butcher their, any of their names. <laughs> Uh, the gripping Cinderella um, tale with lush Keats, Keatsen ad adjectives. I don't know what that means, but anyway. A, a thrilling fantasy adventure. Um, yeah, very bright cover. <laughs> Told with uh, rapturously attentive imagination, few novels create such a singular reading experience. Okay, I gotta breathe because <laughs> I'm talking and talking and talking. Okay, Floria 717 is a sanitarian worker, san oh, sorry, sanitation worker, a member of the lowest caste in her orchard hive where work and sacrifice are the highest virtues and worship of the beloved queen is the only religion. But Floria is not like other bees. With circumstances threatening the hive's survival, her curiosity is regarded as a dangerous flaw, but her courage and strength are assets. She is allowed to feed the newborns in the royal nursery and then to become a forager, flying alone and free to collect nectar and pollen. A feat of bravery grants her access to the queen's inner sanctum, where she discovers mysteries about the hive that are both profound and, uh, and ominous. But when Floria breaks the most sacred law of all, daring to challenge the queen's preeminence, enemies abound from the fearsome fertility 
police who enforced the hive's strict social hierarchy to the high priestesses jealously webbed to power. Her deepest instincts to serve and sacrifice are now o overshadowed by an even greater power. A fierce material love that will bring her into conflict with her conscience, her heart, and her society and lead her to perform unthinkable deeds. Thrilling, suspenseful, and spectacular spectacularly imaginative the bees and its dazzling young heroine will forever change the way you look at the world outside your window so that's that one okay i have two more to go and i think i'm losing my voice <laughs> anyway two more to go okay the next one is a big chunker actually the next two are big chunkers okay this one is the sport of kings by c.e uh, morgan and this one is about, let's see, I think it only has praise on the back. So it says, really in this reviewer's memory has a debut novel emerged with such profound sense of place. Morgan's praise is enchanting from the outset. It's descriptive, fresh, fresh. it's cadence, biblical. Above all, the momentum of Morgan's sentences accrues a sense of urgent in inevitability like a dam whose gates lose a flood. That mysterious in inevitability is a terrific achievement in any art form. So it says it is written in a wonderfully intense and electric prose. So, yeah. So that's that one. And the last book that I have in here, and I need to get a drink. <laughs> the next one is um, the, I don't even know how to say the title. It's, I'm going to butcher it. Uh, Lucina La Cuna. La, I don't know. <laughs> it's this one. It's La Cuna or La Suna. I, Cuna? I don't know. It's by Barbara Kings or over so it says a nuanced portrait rich in a metaphor and magic of an ordinary man caught up in a in the gals of history so yeah let's see what it says on the back here okay um deliver kill okos over delivers her signature blend of exotic locale, political backdrop, and immediately engaging storyline. This inventive novel teems with dark beauty, compelling um, descriptives, descriptions of life in Mexico City bursts with sensory detail. The success of Lucuna, Lucuna? I don't know if it's a C or an S, La Cuna rests in the ways real acts of heroism come from unsuspecting corners. Breathtaking, dazzling, King Salver gives voice to truths whose teller could express them only in silence. So, yeah, so that's the, all the books that I got. They're all female authors that one. Let's see if I can pick it up. <laughs> they uh, all are on the Bellies list. <sighs> I can't lift them. There we go. All female authors. So I want to read these books. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice to see. They're all international and they are all, uh, they all won something or they're on the short list. So yeah, <laughs> they're heavy too. <laughs> anyway. Uh, thank you for watching, um, and um, I'm hoping to add these to my collection and maybe read one every other month or so. Um, I like to read them and see it, what all the hype is about. So, yeah. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you in another video. Bye.